Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for February 6th, 2020. And we have had quite a day yesterday. Oh my goodness, what a bull run yesterday. Um, just an absolute relentless push to the upside. So how about we saddle up and let's get ready for the morning market prep video, the Thursday edition. So, what got into the bulls yesterday? And I'll, I'll be honest with you, there was really good economic data. There was all kinds of things going on. That it was kind of a mixed bag on earnings, but the bulls were absolutely relentless yesterday. Um, they have chosen to anything uh, on the virus front just to flat ignore it. Um, and what's happening here is truly, truly remarkable. I, I don't quite understand it, but I don't have to understand it. I just have to work to follow the price action in the chart. So three big, massive gap ups. One of the things I want to point out in those gap ups, when we get these big gap openings, that means that there is no price support underneath those levels. Um, if there is any kind of a turnaround, just notice that it could be pretty steep if there is a turnaround. So one of the things you want to be careful of is chasing into this move. And I understand it is so easy to get caught up in that emotion of, oh my gosh, I'm missing out and wanting to chase into stocks. Just remember when you're looking for those trades into stocks, pick those trades with lower risk interest or, or lower risk to your stop in that trade. Don't chase moves like this because a reversal can be extremely painful. So this morning we're looking at the morning showing us another gap up open as those bulls relentlessly push and choose to ignore anything um, in regards to the impacts of virus. Let's take a look here and it looks like Dow will be making a new record high at the open this morning with this gap up. Just incredibly bullish, uh, pushing all the way back through to the upside. So we're trying to completely recover here um, as if nothing is going on in China. And um, let's watch um, this carefully this morning because one of the things that can happen when we gap to new highs is that possibility that we gap up, find nothing but profit takers there and sellers and they start pulling it back. So we'll want to watch that pretty closely this morning. Be careful not getting caught up in that. Trend is certainly bullish. There's no doubt about it. We're continuing to hold this trend. The bulls are uh, relentlessly pushing back higher. So we crossed back above this trend. Now any kind of rest consolidation or pullback that proves that support and we've got a bullish trend again, um, a resumption of the trend. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY doing the same thing, but yesterday it already made its new record high, breaking out bulls relentlessly pushing here all day long, just pushing, pushing, pushing to the upside. One of the things that I pointed out in the diamonds yesterday to so many of the folks, if you guys would do this, and I, I highly recommend this, pull up a list of everything in the DAO and just go through these charts and decide whether or not how many of these charts that you would really be wanting to buy caterpillar rallying up this is um, <laughs> quite a move rallying up right into price resistance but certainly not what i would call a bullish chart same with travelers same with CVX, same with 3M, same with Dow, same with Boeing, same with ExxonMobil. So as you start looking at, at, at all of these charts, considering that we went up 500 points yesterday in the Dow, um, notice that a lot of them are just bounces back out of a bottom. So consider that um, as your uh, Thinking about chasing or that urge that I just want to race into this uh, move up. Let's take a look at the Qs. Qs, new record highs yesterday, but they weren't able to quite hold on to those highs yesterday, pushing back the big move in Tesla 
pulling back, uh, damaged the da um, the Nasdaq yesterday, and it's possible we could see a little bit more damage to this today with Tesla Tesla now announcing they will be closing plants due to the virus outbreak, which obviously will hurt their deliveries and things like that. So we'll watch um, that, but that could continue to pull back today, and it was very parabolic to begin with. Let's take a look at IWM. IWM um, also rallied yesterday. We broke back above this resistance level in the chart and we're breaking through some resistance levels over here in the price action. I would say right over in here. But this still has a lot of work to do. There's still some resistance above. Um, IWM, um, the weakest of the indexes um, at the moment. So we'll want to keep an eye on that if that does start to shift. And it is looking at a gap up open this morning as well um, as the bulls continue to race higher um, in this market. Let's take a look at the VIX. It's interesting to me that the VIX, although we ran up 500 points yesterday, the VIX didn't have a corresponding um, response. We did push down, but it certainly wasn't that massive move back down that you would expect with a such a strong rally to the upside. So that provides me just a little bit of concern, a little bit of caution to be aware of. And as we hold on to this little price support right in here, we're still holding on to that downtrend break. Just keep in mind, if those bears were to come back in, if something else comes along, that could shift us back higher. You know, the, the virus outbreak continues to grow. As much as the market wants to ignore it, it continues to expand. Um, if you saw the new numbers on that, nearly 28,000, over 28,000, people have now been infected uh, by the virus. 563 people have died. Um, China says that there are 19 foreigners now infected with this virus. And Japan has found 10 more of the folks quarantined on that ship that have now contra contracted the virus. So this continues to spread. And there is speculation that China will have to, and we don't know this yet, but China will have to extend business closures because they're not getting it under control. It is continuing to expand and increase at a very rapid pace, at least at this point. And if they do continue or extend those business closures, what kind of impacts that might have here in the U.S.? The only reason I bring that up is because we could see um, that really spike back up in fear um, once the market starts to uh, put a little focus back into uh, that situation. So let's watch that closely. Let's take a look at T2122. It's the four week new high, new low ratio. And this is one of those things that always bothers me. Um, when we have a market that's an all or nothing market, and we get this ugly whip and it's very, very challenging to trade. And um, there's probably a lot of you that are frustrated as well um, in the market because it's challenging to find good trades when we um, just whip both directions. So just three days ago, we were down here in an oversold condition. And now three days later, we're up here in an overbought condition and we're extending that this morning um, with a gap up open. So we're gonna be up in here someplace this morning um, with this gap up open, which puts us right into that overbought condition very, very quickly. And that's why I said we want to be really watchful for that possibility that we gap up this morning and see sellers coming in to take some profits. So watch that close. Now keep in mind, just because we're up here doesn't necessarily mean we have to collapse or fall. We've had periods of time with T2122 where we bounce up here and we stay up here for a while. So I don't want to give anybody the impression that we must or have to just whip all the way back down. Just the fact that we're reaching that danger zone, we're uh, chasing into rally, the rally right now might be a poor decision. So keep that in mind and watch that closely as the morning progresses. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. And our economic calendar does have quite a few things that we'll want to consider this morning. Uh, 
first off, we have jobless claims, not expecting um, anything bad in the jobless claims. Um, productivity and cost numbers, the natural gas report, which I would not expect to move the market at all, and then the Fed balance sheet. We do have a couple Fed speakers to make note of today. Um, doubt we learn anything new. Although the market is really in a speculation mode that they're going to get another rate cut from the Fed. Um, actually, um, daily, um, a voting member, daily on the Fed came out yesterday and said, hey, we're, we're right where we need to be to weather this storm. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the market is trying to determine that that um, we're going to get another rate cut and we're rallying based on um, that potential when the Fed is not indicating that at all. So possibly we want to listen real closely to these Fed speakers because maybe they will start to reveal, you know, that they're becoming a little bit more dovish or something along those lines and um, pay attention to that because that could be one of those signals of, you know, another rate cut, more upside move in the market. Let's um, also remember we've got that big employment situation number tomorrow. Fairly common that the market settles down and calls calms down as we head into that number. Um, keep, make note that it it comes out before the market opens tomorrow, so you won't have that opportunity to do much with it um, if it happens to reverse the market in and not in favor of your direction. So just keep that in mind. That's why there's always that pause, just that little hesitation as we wait for that number to come out. Let's take a look at um, our, our earnings calendar today. We have a huge day on the earnings calendar with um, whoops with a big. Um, Let's see, what's our number? 200 and over 210 companies reporting earnings today. So we'll want to make note of that. Um, um, Uber is one of those companies that will be reporting this morning. I know that's uh, one of those highly followed companies, very newsy company. Um, Duncan, Duncan will be reporting this morning. It looks like they may have already reported getting a little tiny gap up here um, this morning. Estee Lauder reporting today. Looks like they're gapping up this morning as well. A little bit of bullishness there. Uh, Baidu will be reporting later today, something we'll want to pay attention to um, as that moves on. Uh, Kellogg's, defensive sector company, um, starting to, looks like it's showing positiveness on a little gap up this morning. So lots of earnings reports to consider this morning as they roll out. Now, none of them would be those kind of reports that I would say are big market moving reports, not those big newsy company reports. Oh, BDX, BDX reporting this morning. That is a big miss apparently here on BDX. Um, so here again, we're getting a little bit of a mix um, in, the, in these reports and um, anything is possible with the volatility around these. So watch those things pretty closely. TTWO is another one that will be reporting today. Um, Twitter is reporting today looks like twitter reported positively gapping up this morning so lots of reports affecting the market in both directions and we'll want to pay close attention to that as they continue to roll out this morning let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up but before we do that if you guys could do me a favor, if you could click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. Hopefully you guys are seeing that the purpose of these videos are not to predict anything, it's to look at those market technicals, to really focus in on how we may want to approach the market for today. Remove that emotion and let's look at the market and see how we might want to approach for the day. And if you find that helpful, if you could please click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment truly appreciate everyone who does do that i try to answer all of those um, as quickly as i can thank you so much you guys are awesome i truly truly appreciate it
So let's take a look at some stocks that are setting up and just keep in mind that some of these stocks have, well, we are kind of extended in their moves and we're going to have to be really, really careful how we uh, trade these because um, of the extension of this market. But we'll want to um, always have some stocks on our list that we want to be paying attention to. Now, yesterday I had um, someone um, uh, mentioned to me, well, uh, you haven't really said anything about any bearish stocks here lately. Well, how about we do that first thing this morning? Um, uh, let's take a look at Starbucks here. Starbucks showing a possible lower high failure, big old dark cloud cover here. Now, the problem we have with Starbucks is it could be setting on this price support. With the bullishness of the market, we're going to watch that closely. But what we do know is Starbucks is likely going to see massive impact from all of their store closures in China. So kind of keep that in mind. This um, has that potential of that failure, that lower high failure. We have already broken the downtrend, and this is the perfect, really the perfect setup for a potential short trade to move on lower. So stocks like that may be something to keep an eye on. Um, there are quite a few of those in that situation. As a matter of fact, if we look at some of the big uh, companies um, within the Dow, um, such as Caterpillar, Caterpillar could be set up short. Notice that we've dropped substantially. This is um, impacts to um, the uh, Chinese situation over there. And notice that we've rallied right back to price resistance in the chart. So we're rallying back up into this resistance level here. And what we would want to do is watch for that potential failure. Now, right now, we don't have any signal of failure. So keep that in mind. There's no signal of failure here yet. We want to wait for that to occur. Now, one of the ways I look for these charts is I use something that's called the 3-8 trap. And if you guys haven't watched that video, um, I'm going to ask you to go over onto the YouTube channel and watch the 3-8 trap videos um, on this because this is, this is helping thousands of people um, this little strategy helping thousands of people to visualize whether they're on the right side or the wrong side of the market and make some really good profits right way options folks are just reporting incredible results with this very simple strategy and the strategy is really simple that is the three crossing down through the eight now we are in a bearish mode when we get that three moving back up rallying back toward the eight exponential moving average we want to start watching for that potential of that failure your pattern in here and then that possible short following through to the downside so that's what we're looking for here and we can see that in lots and lots of charts if we look at um, let's take a look at 3m for example 3m another dow component doing the exact same thing so here's the short trade right up here we break down three crossing down through the eight we get that little relief rally back up and then we get that failure. There's your short trade to the downside. Now it works just the same for an upside move and we can talk about that later, but um, there's an awful lot of these stocks right now that have rallied back into price resistance levels of the chart that could be showing that potential of short. So you wanna watch those pretty closely. Now, the majority of folks that watch these videos um, are, you know, they're they're bullish traders. They want to look for those bullish moves. And one of those you guys know that I've been talking about here, the potential setup is Twitter. And unfortunately, the earnings um, really messed this up. Now, um, we have Twitter gapping up this morning. So what do we do with something like that? Do we rush in? Do we chase this? What do we do? Well, what I always do is I wait for the next entry into the trade. So we gap up here, great, that's fine. Let's, let, let's go ahead and let this move, make its move. And what I wanna do is I wanna wait for the next price pattern to, um, to enter a trade like that. So gapping up here, maybe we consolidate and then we get that nice move. Perhaps gapping up here, we get that pullback and 
I get that next buy signal that holds into the trend. Or perhaps we gap up and continue to run up, we run up and then get that pullback. But I want to wait for that next entry into the trade so that I can get the low risk entry, um, putting my stop loss close to my entry into the trade rather than chasing a move and having a stop a long ways away um, in case the market does happen to get that reversal. So we'll want to watch that pretty closely. Um, other stocks that are showing beautiful patterns here, even though we did get a bearish move here yesterday in Shopify, beautiful trend, pulling back, still holding in this area. If that can find buyers to step up in here, this certainly has that opportunity to move on higher. We'll want to keep an eye on that. Been watching that quite a while and looking pretty good. If you take a look at a stock like Lulu, Lulu popped through yesterday, a little pullback in that chart but still holding price support overall in this and if we can get some follow through to that upside there's your opportunity for that next entry into the trade a um, lot of stocks um, are overextended you know we look at a stock like Nvidia I want it to be on my list because I have a good potential um, recovery going on here in Nvidia but I don't want to chase this move. So Nvidia moving up in right back up in here into this price resistance of the chart. Notice that my stop loss would be a long ways away that swing low on that trade. So what do I need here? Well, in a chart like this, I want to put this in a watch list and I want to keep a close eye on it. If it holds that support up in here or continues to slide out here toward trend, um, I want to be watching that for the next entry into the position. Now, of course, the same thing that happened in Twitter could happen here in NVIDIA. We could just have a mess um, with the earnings report that we can't get into. But there you go. There's um, That's the way I look at charts, and I want to look for those low-risk entries, and hopefully that's helpful. A couple more real quick. I am out of time. Ulta, Ulta looking very, very good here, continuing to hold in this nice little consolidation move, showing bullishness, holding its trend, gap above to potentially be filled. Um, let's keep an eye on that chart. That's looking really, really good. Uh, for full disclosure, I am I'm actually holding a bull put credit spread in this trade right now, waiting for the next potential entry for a long position. So watch that closely. Ulta looking pretty good. And also, J&J uh, &J continuing to extend out here. Now, I wouldn't chase this move at this point. J&J &J looking very, very strong after this big breakout. Blue sky highs in this chart. Let's watch this close. Wait for that next entry into this trade. If this were to consolidate like we did here, wait for that consolidation to occur. Wait for that possible pullback to occur where we just kind of drift back before you look for that next entry into the trade like J&J, &J, but a very nice productive chart, um, um, looking good overall. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day and great profits. Thank you so much for everyone who takes the time to uh, leave those comments and um, subscribe to the channel. You guys are awesome. I, I truly, truly appreciate that. Everyone, take care of yourself. I wish you great profits today, and we'll talk to you all bright and early Friday morning. Have a good one.